What is up everybody, it's your boy Ulvanar, back at it again, this time with the Angry Earth setup that I use for mutations and maybe even open world, also last boss in Barnacles, a dungeon or expedition Cutlass Keys. So melee, my attribute points, I'm running a 265 strength, 200 dex, 50 cone. Now I recommend uh, running 100 cone if you are playing with randoms because things can get out of hands with randoms. Uh, I'm running 50 Kona because I have two pieces with Kona. Ideally, I would want to run with 5 Constitution for maximum DPS. So the rest of the points would go into Strength. And game build would be looking like uh, 300 Strength and 200 Dex. You're getting 200 for this bonus backstab damage. And then the rest of the points in Strength because Hatchet is our main DPS weapon. And Hatchet skills mainly from Strength. A secondary is Dexterity. Let's get into Masteries, Hatchet, fully upgraded running throw, I know not that many people go with it, but I like the damage. It's with this perk, it's 130% weapon damage, which is pretty good. And it's super fast as well, low cooldown on top of that, gives you or puts range on the target 10%. Re uh, cooldown reduction 20%, even re reduced if the target has active debuff. And uh, even a dot uh, counts as a debuff, the rent from this skill itself is a debuff, so... We will have this non-stop. Now, another thing you could go with probably this passive. Um, I am running critical stamina. Well, you get the stamina on crane. Uh, I'm running opal gems in the weapons. So if you have consistent healer who puts down oblivion from Void Gauntlet, which gives you 20 stamina or 30, I'm not sure now, then you can probably spec out of this and put it in the uh, even more cooldown reduction, which I might do. But this is a general run, uh, general build for Hatchet. I run only one, one. you don't need any upgrades on this, I feel like. This this one here is nice damage, but the animation takes too long in my opinion. So you're just better off landing another light attack after this, instead of that. Now Spear, the classic sweeper for its skewer. Uh, we open up with skewer to apply the bleed, but also the weapon perk, which we need on Spear. That applies weekend on target, I will show in a second. We follow up with sweep and birth rate. This combo should should have great synergy with your team member who uses gravity well and maelstrom. And that's perfect timing. It should always, it's usually around that time when your party member uses that. You follow with sweep, more CC into birth rate, apply rent. We deal more damage, about 25% to knock down targets, which is from sweep. So there is the weapons. Now the gear. Your ideal setup is definitely Ward on every piece. And second best perk is either Refreshing or a Weapon perk. So I'm running Refreshing on these two pieces. Uh, all you need is just a two perk. Honestly, for mutations, you would, it would be fun even the blue items that have just the Ward perk. Or for to clear gold, you don't even need the Wards, but people would not invite you. That's just the meta how it is. Back when mutations came out, we cleared all gold without any wards and without any nerfs to the dungeons itself, but it is what it is. The only weapon perk I'm running on armor is Perfrate, and it's honest the only thing you need. Now the second the weapon perk you would want this refreshing torrent. If you cannot get it on hatchet, then get it on armor. But these three are bis in my opinion. I have these gloves as well. They do have conditioning, arboreal, so I could probably run opal gems in here, but yeah, this condition is not that that huge because there is a cap to uh, <clears throat> fortifying uh, 50% and elemental resistances as well. We are running 58%. This is the maximum we can get because we are running aimed as well. Now, boots are refreshing evasion. That we find if you had more evasions, but we don't like more perks. We have only this one. So normal, regular refreshing would be the best because normal refreshing applies to both weapons. This evasion only applies to active weapon. And it also... Account, it also counts or activates after you finish the full dodge. If you cancel the dodge with left click, like let's say this, it doesn't count. You gotta wait for the get up animation and then attack. For the perk to activate. <clears throat> no amulet, you need only health and the protection that is for the uh, mutation that uh, that week. We had nature. So I was rocking this. I say, I say we had nature, but I haven't ran a single in Genesis this week, but that's besides the point, right? <laughs> now, the, the usual hack silver Simon's ring. This is droppable from Starstone named item. 
You could also rock with Legate Spring if you have it from chest runs. Since we are running one pity decks, we don't need Hardy. Earring, I feel like this is the best. Or instead of Nimbly, we'd want Refreshing, ideally. But I don't have that. That will be my PvP earring, so I might switch it. Whatever. Again, you would need only two perks, which is Refreshing and Purifying Toasts. You don't need anything else. This ring, go with Slash and Leeching. Or Slash and Hardy, it's up to you. Just hit Slash, uh, that's useful. A hatchet, I chose Bane and Rogue. But if he pushes, that's fine as well, I would say. And also third perk for Ultimate Biss would be Refreshing Torrent once again. If you cannot get that, like me, myself, two perk hatchet, then go with Refreshing Torrent on the armor. So ideally, me, it would be on either boots or... Actually, boots are fine because we got Blight Resistance. This is also a good perk for uh, against, uh, you know, uh, so sorry, against Anger Earth, which is in Genesis. There's quite a lot of Blight. So ideally, I would have replaced the Resilient for Refreshing Torrent, but... It's nothing like super pro. It, it is helpful, but nothing too needed. All right, that's like super min max end game if you're going for speed runs. Well, Genesis itself is easy, so this is my spear. Nothing too crazy. I would need Bane here instead of killing forty five. This used to be my PvP spear, so all we want on spear is the skewer. That's the thing we need. The weekend on targets is insane. Almost a full cap of reducing targets damage is crazy. That's absolutely crazy. If your if your weapon uh, the party member has a maelstrom weapon perk, then that's even more weak in AOE, so that's good. The heart rune. So once again, the gems. Um, depending on what weak you have, we have nature once again. On weapons, I'm running opal now. Opal and or diamonds would be your highest DPS increase, but if you want to run elemental gems, which in this case would be fire, for more consistency, you could go with that. But fire is not really that strong against Anger Earth if you're running a slash weapon like Hatchet because it balances out, doesn't balance out, whatever, doesn't stack with fire and slash. So I just run uh, Opal. I want to run Opal on all my weapons actually for all enemy types, Anger Earth, Corrupt, that Ancient, Lost. So yeah. I also like to do my rotation with three light attacks and dodge into battle attacks again and dodge. So... I'm gonna, that's that's what I, that's just my I used it in PvP as well. I, I just got used to that. And that random iframe, you you might roll watching the rotation, some good, some important ability from the enemy. So that's good. Now Harpoon, there is only one choice, which is brutal detonate. That's for highest DPS, highest burst and damage. The ideal usage for this heart rune, you wanna have berserk up, you wanna have oblivion from healer. And you want to have a below 110 stamina in our case. So you want to dodge before uh, the explosion. So we can maximize because any empower and base damage modifier applies to hot room. Not sure about base damage, but definitely. Yeah, I did one as well, but definitely empower cap, which is berserk 20% itself right there. Honing stone 7%. So that brings us to consumables. We got good old coding tier 5 for damage. A uh, health potion, a regen potion. If you have a debuff, you can use regen potion because of this toast. It doesn't apply to some of the affixes on mutations, so you might not see some dispels here and there. We are using full harvest turkey, which is not that expensive. Uh, deck strength. We are also running tier 5 holding stone, which is 7%. This accounts for empower cap. You can also run uh, ward potions if you're struggling. If you're like fresh character or fresh server, the group isn't that, that good, that great as a tank, you could totally go for this. You could even go if you're feeling super frisky and, and rich and whatnot. You could go with Oakfish Bomb or even Gemstone Dust, depending if it's melee fight or elemental mage fight. Topaz, the usual for Gypsum, you would want that as well. So this was the gear gems. Artrune consumables. Now I will show you the rotation. So once again, like I told you, when I open up with Skewer into Sweet Perfrade, into Animation Cancel Berserk, Raging Torrent, Running Throw, a start our rotation with three light attacks into dodge or running throw. But like this, sweet. When I'm perfrade. Counter animation raging torrent. Three light attacks, running throw, three light attacks, dodge, three light attacks, dodge, three light attacks. 
Now you could go for a fourth attack, but I find that a bit of a long animation and sometimes it can punish you. But if, once again, if you're not running opals, you could throw in this fourth attack. You don't have to cancel after trail attacks. If you know you have a free shot, you're not going to get hit. Now there are ways to cancel uh, Berserk, either with light attack, which is left click, or skill. In our case, it's Raging Torrent or Frail Rush. This was without a lot of tech. I also have a video for animation canceling Berserk. It will be right up top, right in here. Where's my cursor? So you can check it out. Because there is more ways from weapon swap as well. As you could see right there when I was showcasing the rotation. But I believe this is it. I think we covered everything right now. I can't really think of anything else. Now, of course, this is one of the best DPS builds. But a great sword is also super powerful with DPS, if not better. Now, if we have some nerfs incoming to Greatsword and Hatchet, like they promised quite a long time ago, and still nothing happening, then Rapier might be the king of DPS, or depending on how much they buff ranged weapons. And also, Sword and Shield will probably be the king, because the paints on weapons and on Shield, they stack. So if you get both, then SNS will be on top. Also, the Bane on Shield is only a, a droppable think on the shield you cannot craft that you can only drop it in dungeons i do have ancient bane on the shield but that's pretty much it so i might test that dps build in the future i might go that build in the future because my main build for pvp is hatchet and sword and shield so we'll see also one thing to note hatchet spurk against all odds is what makes hatchet super powerful in aoe because you can get 50 percent damage right there base damage which means this does not account for empowered cap which is even better since you already have a lot of Empower buffs like Berserk and Honing Stone and whatnot. So there, there it is. This is my uh, PvE setup for Angry Earth for mutations. Almost full, full base. I just need two pieces pretty much changing. And pants as well because I have full cone. But yeah, thank you all for watching. I hope this helps. Good luck with hunting for the items and whatnot. Practice the combos. Practice the Berserk cancel. Because that does increase DPS. Because it saves you time. And yeah. Hopefully talk to you next time. Until then, y'all have a good one and see ya.